Hello, hello, and welcome, hello, welcome hello, along hello, to the Philly Booster. Yeah, 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 it's the Philly Booster show here. Yeah, it's the Philly Booster show here on the on the, the radio. You can text because you probably can't because you don't even have a telephone. Who knows? It's going to get here and then who knows? It's going to get here and then 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 it's going to get here yeah, it's the Philly Booster, yeah, it's the Philly show, Booster here show here on the, on the, on the radio. And it's Sunday evening at 9 o'clock and you're listening to the Philly Busters Presents a Comedy Hour on LCCR.ie. Uh, if you want to contact us, you can text us at 0344 I'm going to try that again. I got that kind of... Everything's All gone. over the shop. Yeah, it's all gone downhill from here. 0344 Or you can t- tweet us at... What's our handle, Adam? At... The filibusters. And you can also get us on any of our Facebook pages, which is usually the best way to get us because uh, we tend to check them. So, joining me in the studio today is fellow filibusters. Adam. Barrett. John. Can we introduce each other because I hate saying my own name. (laughs) <laughs> oh, so we say everybody to the left of yeah, us. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, okay. Dara Fitzgerald. In the beginning, someone and Eve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's always so- Ryan, Stephen Ryan, <laughs> Adam. <laughs> you never introduced John. You just put yeah, my you, name again. The, you got the left and the right wrong there. All right. Uh, <laughs> jo- uh, to my left, John Spillane. <laughs> Oh, oh, somewhere a village is missing an idiot. <laughs> yeah, because we got we got him here. Yeah, with us. We, we've got an idiot. With us in the studio. Tip specifically, Tip Town is missing mm, an idiot. Exactly. And to be the in, <laughs> no, and to be the village not. idiot of Tip Town, to be the designated village idiot of Tip Town, you have to be top of your game. That's like making the Jamaican sprint team. Like you know, you're the best of the best. Yeah. <laughs> Can we yeah. give him a round of applause for this? Yes. Well done, Dara. Um, I worked hard. <laughs> I sat in a couple of councils for a while, and eventually I promoted the village idiot. <laughs> Um, I'd like to thank my parents <laughs> for, for uh, I don't know making you for partying <laughs> during those nine months. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say something worse, but then I don't know. <laughs> right, we've a bit of news, I believe we do. Things what? happened this week. Did a they? bit of a bit of a story. Things happened this week. Uh, stuff went down. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> notable. M- one then. of the more notable stories. Uh, I'm just after learning about, and I thought thought it was rather. Hilarious. Well, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, Donald Trump's reaction to uh, a Twitter troller. Adam, enlighten us. Um, there's, be, there's been great trolling on, on Twitter this week because someone tweeted Donald Trump and it was like, at Donald, whatever, blah, 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 blah. My grandparents were huge fans. They're dead now. Will you please retweet this picture of them? Well, I, actually, did you have the tweet there? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, at real Donald Trump. My parents who passed away always said you were a big inspiration. Can you please retweet for their memory? And it was a picture of Fred and Rose West, the Uh, famous serial killers. um, (laughs) Philip Bradbury is his name, and his his Twitter handle is at feckhead. (laughs) (laughs) Which should have been assigned straight away. (laughs) It should, yeah. And... uh, and he sent that delightful trolling message, which um, which Donald Trump decided to retweet, uh, because obviously Donald Trump uh, isn't au fait with um, with major serial killers, uh, especially English ones. <laughs> yep, mm. Ho- hotels are his thing, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, not so much serial killers, oh, but yeah. hotels. I think two pays, and, gr- and two pays, two pays are his thing. Two pays. Adam, what were the and what Bert was the search. name of the couple? <laughs> uh, Fred and Rose is it Rose or Rosemary, Stephen? Rosemary West. Fred and Rosemary West. They were serial killers, not producers of yeah. tuna. I assume that they serial killed together. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, for some reason, I imagine some kind of weird Mr. and Mrs. Smith situation <laughs> where they're both going on separate sil- serial killings and then they lead to each other and realize, oh, we've the serial killer each other. Ooh. But it actually revitalizes their marriage. Think or, or of, maybe, um, uh, it's, it, it might be where they drew the idea from. Or maybe uh, they made Think <laughs> of the Seven Psychopaths and the uh, Tom ah, Waits yeah. and the other woman. Mm. They're kind of like them. When I'd <laughs> love if. Like at one stage, just some young girl was in like a night dress. It's about to lie down in her bed, and at the same time, he comes from under the bed, and she comes out the closet. And he's like, "Oh hey, you're gonna murder her as well, were you?" 
<laughs> well, after we do this murdering, we should definitely we grab a donut down at the local five and nine because <laughs> I think you're my kind of cat. The local five and nine. Are you just like made of American pop culture? Just yeah, I just I thought that seemed like something really wholesome that people <laughs> would do on a day. Yeah. But this whole um, thing didn't stop because uh, it's that old cliche. <coughs> History happens first as tragedy, second as comedy. It happened again in the week when Billy Ray Cyrus got a tweet saying, my dad was a big fan of yours. Will you please retweet this picture in memory of him? And it was Jimmy Savile. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure a lot of Billy Ray Cyrus's fans look like Jimmy Savile. <laughs> I can just imagine his concert is just a sea of tracksuit suits <laughs> and grey hair. We love you, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, what, what? Actually, say more of them than the Miley's. Then just to compound this, uh, compound this story. Oh yeah, it would have been much better if it was Miley, wouldn't it? The Donald, <laughs> as he affectionately refers to himself. As, the Donald. He doesn't. He does. He he doesn't even like third person it. He like. Prefixes as well, the Donald. Oh, he does. Well, yeah, but why yeah. doesn't he yeah, say yeah. the Don? That would make more sense because he's. No, he refers to himself as the Donald. Um, and <laughs> but so but he re- he tweeted then some jerk fraudulently tweeted that his parents said I was big inspiration to them. Plus, please retweet. Out of kindness, I retweeted. Maybe I'll sue. <laughs> <laughs> and then his next. I thought I was being nice to somebody. Read their parents. I guess this teaches you not to be nice and trusting. Yeah, Tell you what, <laughs> we hadn't we hadn't this on the schedule, but speaking of celebrity suing, you know that whole um, leak gate thing, oh. or what you call it? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. They're talking yeah. about Google, aren't they? Yes, Jennifer Lawrence and another actress, Kid Upton. Who, that one, they're no, it's a different one. She, yeah, okay, I don't or know is it her? Right. Either way, they're suing Google for sixty million, and it's nothing to do with Google at all. No, but they're, what they're saying is I Google know, profited I, from their. But why are they suing Google? Uh, Find the hacker. Yeah, but at the same time, I suppose Google facilitated. This is a very kind of a shady ground. If you if you remember back to... Uh, do you remember that? Uh, actually, I know because uh, Google, had they wanted to, could could have had within their power to, to remove to any links of, of that or to remove those tags. And uh, so you, he, they could actually do something significant to stop it, but they chose not to and allowed for it, that to happen. It's very dubious. Oh, okay. I hope yeah. it doesn't win in the courts. Per so do I. So yeah. do I. Yeah. Because I think it's, it's, um, it would be kind of it would have knock on effects for other cases down the road. But if you remember I'm, Mega Upload uh, years ago, it yeah. was a kind of a, a sharing site, file sharing site. Um, Kim dot com, who was the owner of the file sharing site, that wasn't his his born name. He changed it at some point. Okay. Actually. Um, <laughs> just in case you thought that was a. If you ever trying to find the guy who's like a, an internet pirate, yeah, yeah. Go, oh, is it is it Stephen Ryan or is it or is it Kim dot com? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's probably that guy. When that happened, there's knock on effect because they were blaming all that was stored on the servers was what people put on the servers. Not they put up no information; they merely facilitated it. Similarly, the Pirate Bay is a search engine. It doesn't do anything else. It, mm. It's just a search engine. So when uh, all these courts ruled against the Pirate Bay, the same application should have surely been made for Google, which also mm. does the exact same thing yeah. as the Pirate Bay. The only thing I think with the Pirate Bay was they managed to rub people up the wrong way. I don't think there was any kind of legal justification. Yeah, you can't yeah. say that, oh, no, no, we're, 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 we're not about uh, pirating uh, movies. Oh, what's your name again? The Pirate yeah. Bay, is it? Oh, uh, interesting. No, I yeah. think it's because, like... But the, Google were still we, equally yeah. at fault. Yeah. Yeah. We I, didn't I, know like, people were selling drugs was, here at the cocaine warehouse. <laughs> I was reading about how they actually did it. Did, did you hear about how they, they were hacked? Uh, um, they they no. uploaded it to the cloud, was it? Yeah, and it's it's actually rather unimpressive because when you think about hackers, you you think you know nineteen eighties films where people are going da 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 da, and you see everything flashing up. In the yeah. Thing. No, what they did was they hacked into their cloud accounts by finding their email addresses, going and going. Oh, I forgot my password. And when they get their security questions, they just stalk them on social media until they find out, you know, what kind of car they have. And if the security question is, what kind of car do you oh, drive? Wow. Uh, they type it in, bing, reset the password, and now you're into the account. But, but that's actually it's what... It's clever. Smart, but, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very, very clever, but it's not like this evil but, hacker thing we think but of. But none of that hacking is... Even the white hat hackers, that's not what they do at all. They, all they do is, like, they sit at home, 
there's a program and it's mostly just kind of constant attacks, like 10 million attacks a second. But it just keep, keeps trying random things and the program just keeps going. So they basically just like mm. start a program and they go away and have lunch like, you know. It's nothing to do with like even too much trying to outsmart the program at the computer. It's just trying everything until something works, then they're in. Yeah, it's mm. great. I, th- I think we should appreciate this because uh, this may be the first time ever people will have learned something on our show. Uh, that could, <laughs> could, could well be the case. Um, but uh, yeah, that w- both interesting and educational there. Uh, our first story. Can we follow it up on us with our second story? I think, <laughs> we've, I think we've gone on a bad tangent here. I don't like this tangent. Um, <laughs> Siva, would you like to introduce the second story? What's our second story? Oh, yes. The, uh, our second story is... A goat born with a human face. <laughs> that sounds like a great novel. <laughs> <laughs> now they have basically the goat was born. That's horrible. It was born dead. We're going to post um, this on our Facebook page so you can. Well, it wasn't see born it. dead. I love was that you born, said that's born, horrible. Born dead, like share. <laughs> can it be born if you're already dead? Yeah, I, I you, like you give the the mother goat would have given birth. Yeah. All right. No, because a friend of mine once dead. said that. Yeah, oh, he drank a, um, a, he got really drunk one night and he woke up asleep in the in the corridor. I said, you wo- you didn't wake up asleep. You woke up. You were asleep. True that. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I can't I'll believe I'll you just called him out on the radio like that, Dara. That was such bad form. I oh. didn't actually name him. So, so. Oh. I, I, th- I think, I think um, the discussion of, of where birth and uh, life starts is a bit more... Uh, bit more of a conundrum than your friend waking up asleep in the corridor. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah. In the same vein. So, but wait a minute, guys. Aren't goats supposed to have goat faces? Yeah, And sorry. not human back, faces? Back to the story, You're right, yeah. actually. You're right. There's a yeah. family in central Argentina. They're farmers, and they found the, the goat, goat, the goat was born. The goat doesn't have a person head, really. If yeah, you, you can go it. on to the filibusters comedy hour on Facebook, and you'll see the article. The goat was born out of one of their, their flock. Do you have a flock of goats? Um, I heard a goat it was born from one of their birds yeah. goat. a crash of goats and they yeah. saw it saw it was deformed was born dead so they buried it and later on it was dug up and the family have our family of farmers have claimed that it was due to pesticides mm. that they created the deformity but the people yeah. in the town are <laughs> having none of it pest anyway and are saying <laughs> you rode that goat that's your kid. That's your goat, baby. Okay, right. no, no, wait, wait a second kid. now. Yeah. You casually, well you you casually hopped over one detail when you said it was dug up. <laughs> Who's digging up dead goats? Oh. Apparently, the neighbors wanted to dig up the dead goat to show the hi- to highlight the excessive use of pesticides, yeah. and they got a picture ah. of the goat. Yeah, it, it doesn't look human anyway. It looks like John Carpenter is the thing. Like it's a, that's ex- it's, it's, it's it's spirit spirit yeah. I don't know. We're 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 we're. What was this on? Have they flame it yet? Daily Star. It's a, UK. The Daily Star, the most credible newspaper in all the land. Mm. Mm. But no, <laughs> <laughs> no. no, but the, there's this thing. There's this thing called Photoshop. No, I don't know if you've heard of it. Oh, no, yeah, no, 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 it's a, it's not a human's face. It's it's just flame thrower it and let's be done with if it. If you've seen let's the Goonies, end the threat. Sloth. Yeah. Worse. Worse than sloth. It is, but it's, it's kind of That's sloth. It is really. It doesn't look like a human at all. No, it doesn't. No. Look at the teeth on it. It's, it's a wiggy looking goat it, it is It's not It doesn't look like Your day to day goat Also I sub- <laughs> The I second one has eyebrows And everything though To be fair I'm not even sure Which one's the This face. is great for a radio show Everyone going Look at that guys mm. Look at that But apparently, I, I do think this has Some grounds in some work Now I Because I heard a story When I was younger I'm not sure if it's Apocryphal or, or Maybe a bit outrageous But This woman my mother Worked with Had um, Rabbits And she also had a cat And one day <laughs> The cat decided I'm going to mate With this rabbit And it had Little rabbit kittens, but they only lived for like ten minutes and then they died. Wait, what? What? Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this isn't a thing, Adam. Oh, T- tell just, us this story. Genetically, this shouldn't happen. See, okay. what's happened here is that uh, Adam's aunties and mother said a funny story to him as a child, and yeah. he's gone on to believe it right into <laughs> adulthood. That's is exactly what's, what's happened. Exactly what's happened. Exactly yeah, it what's might happened be what here. happened. But this woman told me that mm. she had the things and they died, and it was very sad, and they had to bury them. But. <laughs> Kitten slash bunny baby. I was watching a documentary there the other week, and uh, it was about um, 
this cat, all right, but only for one half of a cat. The second half was dog. <laughs> and cat at dog. either end... <laughs> <laughs> Adam wins for first one to get the cat dog joke. <laughs> as soon as you said cat, I knew where it was going. Yeah. No, because I remember you said as well that, oh, when you were 16, uh, you put, like, bubbles into a fountain. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, what's your childhood? All these, like, magical stories about, yeah, like, Yeah, I grew up in a... <laughs> yeah, I grew up You're in a Disney Enid, film. Enid Blyton book. Yeah. <laughs> I would love it so much if it came out that the the goat human John Carpenter's the thing creature decided to try and sue Google for 60 million <laughs> <laughs> spreading pictures of it on the internet <laughs> I just want my privacy <laughs> um, that's how I imagined he'd speak more news this isn't just um, news we've been educational and stuff today so we're doing public service mm. now as well oh, great people ladies this will be sex education <laughs> Don't be putting potatoes in your fanny. What? Don't be doing that. Yeah, it's um, ill-advised at mm. best. And a waste of a potato. Yeah. Or a vagina. <laughs> Stephen, <laughs> please. Yeah, this week saw National Potato Day, and it <laughs> threw up a story. The most Irish day in the world. <laughs> it, threw, it threw up a story from Colombia. There was an ancient practice of girls putting vagina putting putting, <laughs> putting vaginas, vaginas putting <laughs> vaginas on top of their potatoes no uh, potatoes into their vaginas to stop them um, as a form of contraceptive and a fibre no no it was afterwards what it wasn't like a diaphragm potato they didn't oh. like carve it and go here that's in now nothing's bypassing this oh, kinda, I misread no, this no it was that would kind of make more sense though no it, it I thought you it know, was just blocking things you know like, make, make the potato now, goes, there's no thing on earth except <laughs> Some weird sort of painting that will make you go, it's okay to put a potato in a vagina. Yeah, well, I was saying the Incas, like, maybe. Mm. You know, their <laughs> options were limited back then. Now, obviously, we have other options. But this isn't the Incas. This is now. This is... Actually, it, it also, yep. is there, like... Is Colombia, like, pretty poor? Because um, Colombia is very, very polarized between very wealthy and very poor. Because, mm. you know, if you've got a famine going on, you've probably got better places to be putting potatoes. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have a famine, but um, there's a lot of poverty in Colombia. And I've heard there's drugs there. Yeah. Apparently. Mm. Well, well, yeah, okay, so this, this the woman. Street. Yeah, we're word on the streets of, <laughs> of Bogota. 22, 22 year old woman. Back alley job. Bad sex. Teachers. Unprotected. <laughs> and her mother said to her, You put a potato. In your fanny. And it will stop you being pregnant. I don't know if it said it will <laughs> Go into a bean soak tongue. up the sperm or whatever. But she, uh, the quote here is that my mom told me that if I didn't want to get pregnant, I should put a potato up there. And I believed her. So instead of making her pregnant, it germinated her. And now she's got little potato sprouts growing. <laughs> yeah, in apparently she got a bit a bit unwell because the uh, so rib like, for your pleasure <laughs> and the roots start digging into her um, oh, uh, her lady insides. Circle of life continues. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's disgusting! What happened sure. there? Are there any oh, pictures? Uh, oh, it's the moon sorry. I, I I've just seen the last line of this article that I didn't read before. But no. while researching the authenticity of this story, we discovered that I prepare for this. This is a great sentence. We discovered that Coca-Cola douching was a means of contraception in America in the 50s. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, no, but like 100 years ago, Coca-Cola was like one of these miracle tonics. They basically used it for everything. It's the 1950s. I know, but, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Can you just go, oh, what's Coke's slogan? Uh, um, drink it and get diabetes. Oh, uh, share, well, uh, <laughs> share a Coke or something. I, I enjoy your uh, something stupid. Yeah, have crack. Oh, okay. <laughs> have the crack with Coke. Either way, your Wii U will never gain control of your children again. <laughs> exactly. What is um? Yeah, Coca Cola in the fi- when did your man Kinsey do his studies on sex in the ni- in in America? Was that in the nineteen fifties? In a lab. Did you ever watch your, the film Kinsey with Liam Neeson? No. no. Oh, I think I did ages ago, yeah. It's a it's brilliant film, really, really It was good. a sex thing. It was probably late 1950s. Mm-hmm. Um, it might have been late 1950s. Because mm-hmm. sex didn't exist mm-hmm. in America. Yeah, they, they just had mm-hmm. the bullish notion of what they were doing over yeah, there yeah. back then. Yeah. Oh. They thought... Oh. They th- thought uh, oh, yeah. They just hadn't a clue. Watch the film. I'm not going to spoil it on you. Uh, Stephen, say that, uh, since he's a sex expert and all, would there be boobs at all in this movie? Uh, no, it's... I'll pass, I'll pass. I don't know. think there was, anyway. Yeah, I'm going to pass on it. That doesn't mean that there wasn't. Def- definitely not watching it. <laughs> hmm. Oh, we've got, a, we've got a comment here from Fintan. 
South America has this forum, has forum for this kind of thing. Uh, keep talking there, I'm going to look up what this article is posted. Yeah, and now we're all waiting anxiously yeah. for... Well, the first thing that pops up when it says, are you over 18? So thanks for that, Fintan, this is... <laughs> well, 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 I can talk about what I did for the week. Oh, it's a video. In we'll, tedious detail. We'll, we'll talk about <laughs> it after, after a song. Uh, give us a song. But uh, have we any more news? But, but, but my week. Uh, our song is... Oh, the news there. Uh, by Redbone. Ooh. I went for I went for a kind of offbeat Americana uh, music this week, and I decided we I would play. We are we're all wounded at wounded knee by Redbone. Boo! I thought you were going to do "Come Get Your Love," and I was all excited, and now I'm not. We're all- That was Redbone with uh, We Were All Wounded at Wounded Knee. Curious uh, thing about Redbone was their uh, Native American rock band. Mm. Oh. Yeah, mm. that's the red, where red, the Redbone part comes from. Mm. And uh, and Wounded Knee, of course. Being, I think uh, they should change that name because it's it. insensitive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, yeah. You've been watching South Park recently, Adam. We're just keeping up with American yes. news, but yes, that's uh, what's But uh, Redbone did the, also the opening song from Guardians of the Galaxy this year, and I'm going to say that it's possibly the best opening credit sequence maybe I've ever seen, with, the, with a big part of it being the Redbone song, Come Get Your Love. It was fantastic. Mm. Big talk, John. It was what big talk. What song is that? Down, John. Down, That's big down, talk. Down. Are you... Are you a big man? Adam, <laughs> like I, I don't know why you're asking me this on the radio in front of everything. I think all of our listeners know. I think everybody in the studio knows that I'm the big man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, time for the quiz. <laughs> um, get out, get out, and into your corner of silence. Big, big man doesn't go in corner of silence. <laughs> big man does what he wants. <laughs> you're like the, the viper's special little brother. Oi, <laughs> right, lad. Okay, uh, the quiz this week is about special moments in Irish politics. So the point of the quiz is to beat the filibusters. You can text in on 083 or get us on at the filibusters on Twitter or put in just the filibusters in Facebook and you'll find us eventually. Beat the filibusters, we've got five questions. If you can get more than the sum total of the other three peacocks over here, you'll win. You'll win. What will you win? Send us a message and we'll get Stephen to put it on his Facebook so you can effectively frape Stephen. Okay, question number one. According to Michal Martin, after a meeting with Japanese diplomats, you Irish people are very good at what? Question number two. During Christmas 2010, the Irish government gave away 53 tonnes of what to underprivileged families? Question number three. In 2009, TD Paul Gogarty swore at what other TD during a doll session? you got to get his first name as well. Number four. Which former Taoiseach said, The boom times are getting even boomier, as well as warning citizens not to upset the apple tart. And question number five. In 2006, then-Senator Mary O'Rourke sparked controversy when she referred to her campaign team as working like what? So there you are. If you got it, text in on 083 uh, go to Twitter at the filibusters or go on to Facebook and you know put in filibusters or something I really don't care whatever okay the guys are back oh hello Adam hi you, you, did you, you not know Tonic has been in the cone of silence there for, for like three weeks yeah he's he's getting very lonely in there I'd say he's, I'd say he's gonna be skinny is he he yeah. has got a bit skinny yeah and uh, he keeps talking about his beard as well he loves, he loves his beard it's really long beard beard I'm not, beard. I'm not sure he's in the cone of silence mm. yeah he might be able to talk at all Fintan are you being racist or are you just answering questions <laughs> We've got, Fintan is, is, is replying into us here and to be honest he's getting some pretty good answers so don't look at Fintan's answers Go on to another page and and do that because we don't want people copying answers or anything. Okay, now for films and stuff. <laughs> That's a nice jingle we got. We that, that cost us fifty grand to, get <laughs> to license that jingle. <laughs> We're using the same jinglers as uh, Irish Water. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> just topical strangling, strangling, drowning noises. Well, Odd bit of satire there from Stephen Ryan. We're, we're not going to pay them either. <laughs> 
Yeah, never let it be said that he's he hasn't got a razor sharp wit. I'm actually sitting uh, sitting here enjoying a glass of tap water uh, <laughs> on the house of SCCR, <laughs> so uh, I'm fully taking advantage of my radio <laughs> position, guys. The, the advantages of fame are endless. Uh, John Spillane, The Shining Wit, mm. or was that the other way around? Mm. Right, John, what were you watching in films this week? I was watching, on Thursday, I went to go see Gone Girl. Hooray! Uh, is she back yet? What? Uh, oh. She isn't back yet, no. Uh, Gone Girl is the newest film by David Fincher, of course, recognised as one of the best filmmakers going today. One of my personal favourites, and directed two of my all-time favourite movies in Seven and Fight Club. And he also directed the only movie that I've cried for any lengthy period in, which is The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Did you cry during that? I oh, cried for about John. half an hour. What? Straight. Was that because yeah. you were attracted to him at the start, but then you felt like a bit better? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he, uh, it's based on the novel by Gillian Flynn. Uh, she's a, la- a nice lady who wrote a nice book. Now, I was on holidays in Greece. Uh, I know you think her name is Gillian, but it's actually Gillian. Uh, that was a very smug face there. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I yeah, yeah, yes. the Stephen. idea of him, fa- of him crying during Benjamin Button. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, I know, it was just because he was a baby with dementia. <laughs> how scary, uh, like, how sad is that? Spoilers. Mm. But, uh, he, yeah, uh, I picked up the book while I was go- about to go on a lad's holiday for- to Greece. <laughs> because I was like, oh, David Fincher's doing the movie, I don't know, but I really want a book to read on this holiday. And I, I read through it on most of it through the holiday. So while the lads were out, like, on the pool chatting up girls and kicking soccer uh, with people, I was up on the balcony reading Gone Girl by myself. <laughs> but it was a fantastic book. Dare I say, one of my favourite books I've ever read. And the film is very good. The film's very good. Would you say? Very good. Very good. <laughs> it's very good, but it's n- <laughs> it, it wasn't the book. It was, yeah, it was a, it was a great adaptation of, it's another one of, example of David Fincher taking a book and bringing it to the big screen in a way that people thought were impossible, like with Fight Club and with The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Oh my god, I'm getting emotional thinking about it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, it stars Ben Affleck as uh, a man who's moved back to Can- his hometown of, I think Kansas, I'm not sure, but anyway, one of those, Missouri, one, actually, Missouri. Missouri. He's moved back to Missouri, and he has found that his one day when he comes home, his wife has gone missing, and it quickly becomes a big media case, the media are all over it, he looks like he's under suspicion as well, and everybody's wondering, where has Amazing Amy gone? It also stars Rosamund Pike, and she's given given probably an Oscar worthy performance here. Not uh, Oscar nominated worthy anyway. I don't think she'll end up winning in the end, but oh. she's definitely best female performance this year and better than most last year as well. John, I was looking at Rose Wanda Pike on IMDb today for that thing. What mm. else was she in? What we The World's End. The End, yeah. She's the world. She's are. in the world's That's end, right, yeah. and she's in Jack Reacher and stuff like that. But if we if we just go back, say like you were saying that the baby has, been- has dementia. Yeah. That's really sad. That is isn't really <laughs> sad. And if you see an old woman who is in love with the baby, walking the baby around because nobody knows the baby, no one spent time with the baby, that's sad. The, the, that's sad. The the uh, mommy. No, your mother's been dead for many years. Yeah, no, <laughs> very, sad. very sad. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's brilliant. I'm definitely going to go see it again before it leaves the cinema. It wasn't... It wasn't my favourite David Fincher film, but that's just... I think I went in with two high standards because it's one of my favourite directors, top three favourite directors right now, and it's based on probably my favourite book I've ever read. How many thumbs up, John? I'm going to give it two thumbs up. Uh, definitely say, definitely go see it uh, before that's it leaves the cinema. not many thumbs. Uh, it's th- I only actually have two thumbs. I know, yeah, but mm. we, we didn't limit it to you. Oh, all right. right. Okay, I'm going to go walk out in the streets and force people thumbs up. But yeah, go see Gone Girl if you get a chance. And uh, Tyler Perry (laughs) is actually able to act. Hmm. Stephen, recommend us something. This week, I watched the crossover of Family Guy and South Park. Uh, uh, Family uh, Guy and I was gonna say that The one. Simpsons. Mm. Um, okay, let me first point out that week after week, I come in here and I talk about the amazing Spider-Man 2 or Ganyan the Galaxy. And, and then Steven like sits there with a smug face like, Well, I saw Pride. No, I went to see a play or something. You watched the Family Guy, Simpsons Guy mm-hmm. crossover before you watched Gone Girl. Okay, let's hear it, Stephen. Uh, you 12-year-old child. 
you fix this as well by saying this is the guy who poo pooed the Lego movie? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, let's, let's. But the reason I poo pooed the Lego movie was because it was impinging on my Simpsons watching. <laughs> if you and recall. you didn't like Lego either, mm. though. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I you still don't like Lego. Curmudgeon. I, think it's, uh, I mean, and fam- did Family Guy, okay, let's hear it. Did Family yeah, Guy on. impede on your Simpsons? They actually did. <laughs> <laughs> really? Because I really liked it. Um, I thought it wasn't as bad as I expected. I was expecting a real stinker, and it was it was okay. I think what saved it was that it was an extended episode and went for 40 minutes. I think that's what killed it. I think they could have cut out that last bit. They could have cut out that, that Homer being, in the chi- being the chicken in the chicken fight bit, because any time Family Guy does that, it's just, oh, well... <laughs> You just crapped out and didn't want to write. Yeah, yeah I, I was enjoying it's, it. <laughs> it's it just it it's uh, annoying as hell. I can appreciate doing it once and seeing how it goes. Making it a running thing is just it, it's just showing that you don't actually give a damn about. But the watchers. first two two first three acts, if you or if it's only three, whatever. The first bit was brilliant. Of the Simpsons guy. Simpsons guy. Yeah. It was yeah. Really good. Uh, yeah, it opened quite well. Oh, I was talking about this show. Now it's just descended into madness. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it opened quite well. The it, it set the stage where they had to leave Quahog and they went and they arrived in Springfield and their car got robbed. Can I say who robbed their car? I can. You can. Hans yeah. Molman robbed their I'm car. I'm not going to watch it anyway. <laughs> I'll, I'll watch it. How come you're not going to watch it, Darren? Oh, I just won't. He doesn't have eyes. I, have, I haven't seen The Simpsons in years, and I don't like Family Guy. Dara, what would you mm. rather watch? I Simpsons Family, Family, Guy, Family Guy crossover or Gone Girl? Probably Gone Girl. Hooray. Small victories. Uh, uh, I'm on your side, Stephen. Yeah, this is, I would like to watch oh, Gone Girl. I, 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 I sat down to watch The Simpsons Family Guy crossover, and it starts off, and they're... Uh, they talk about how they have neighbours who live near them who are really fancy schmancy, so they go and visit them, and then they get convinced to join them climbing Mount Everest. And then they climb Mount Everest and get lost from the other family because they get so competitive. They end up having to eat the child of the other family because they find him frozen and dead and everybody's lost in the mountain. And then they go and save the parents of that family, and then the episode ends, and then I realised, oops, I watched the wrong episode of Family Guy. <laughs> 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 Very good. So this week, I... I wasn't watching much TV this week. Cause, uh, oh, I went oh, to Dublin. Can I finish up on mine? No. I give us two thumbs up. Hmm. Out of how many thumbs? Do you not have any more thumbs it, there to put it, up, Stephen? It, it, it's an, it, a handful of thumbs. It, it's an <laughs> undefined amount of thumbs that can go mm. up. So I'm just giving it two thumbs up. Two. So that could be really high or really low. It could. It okay, could. wait, wait. Would mm-hmm. you say it's better than the usual Simpsons? Would you say it's better than the usual Family it's Guy? And would you like to see them do it again? Better than the usual Family yeah. Guy, not as good as the usual Simpsons. And would you like to see them do it again? Mm-hmm. No. I okay. Would. No, I'd like to see a Simpsons of South Park crossover. If there's going to be a Sim- No, that would be crap. But there's going to be a Simpsons Futurama drama one. Oh, that I'm yep, a lot that, more interested yes. in than Family I Guy Simpsons. I can't see how that will work, uh, because just... What well, time travel? Time travel. I cannot. <laughs> I, a thousand years. I there. cannot wait for Homer to meet Bender. It's going to be brilliant. No, I want. No, I want to, no. I want to see. I want to see completely. a Grandpa Simpson and then B Hans Moorman meet the Professor. That's what I want to. I want to see or Lenny meet Fry. Leela and Lisa. I want to see Zap Brannigan meet every single person in the Simpsons <laughs> cast. I just want the Simpsons no, family no. to be replaced by Zap Brannigan. Zap Brannigan and uh, like Duffman. Duffman. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. A quickie mart, you say? My favourite uh, crossover, I think, to date with the Simpsons has been The Critic. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's it good. stinks. <laughs> it stinks. Um, this it week... Your stinks. shoes are untied. <laughs> this week, because it's being released on Netflix... After what ten years or something since it's finished, uh, I was I spent a weekend Netflix with that really made me pod. question my sexuality. To be honest, which I don't even my sexuality, my gender. I spent the weekend cleaning and watching the Gilmore Girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but <laughs> after Gilmore Girls. Oh my god. Okay. After watching, because I, I used to be a huge fan of it when I was a kid because my course. mother loved it. So I always yeah, watched the course. Gilmore Girls, yeah. and it's coming out on Netflix now. This week, so I was like, "Yeah, I'll give it a go." 
Um, I don't know when my next my next next <coughs> bill is up, but if I cancel it now, can I try and get my money back? Because yeah. I will not have the Gilmore Girls anywhere near my house. I'm gonna put it out there as one of my most hated programs of all time. I was see what what I did was I started watching with the very very last episode, and this that was awful. That was really really bad. This looks awful. I don't know where I'm going. It, no, it's no. Oh, are you not aware of the Gilmore Girls? No, Steve? I thought oh, I was telling oh, you. Oh, the there's a world of stink that you still <laughs> have to explore. Oh, open up your nostrils and take a whiff because it's stinky. Okay, so it splits the group, but <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's a, <laughs> my opinion um, counts for two. I can't remember. I seen an episode. I can't remember. Do I like it or not? Okay, here's what it is. Okay, so there's, there's a mo- mother and daughter. Okay, and they talk really fast. They I'm really intelligent. And I'm really intelligent. And I'm a working mom. And I'm going to get straight A's. And I like boys. And I like boys too. Blah 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 blah. But with <laughs> professional actors. Yes, it's, we're with professional <laughs> actors. But no, it's really really good. Um, Selling themselves out. And really attractive. Alexis Bledel is beautiful. Oh, you know the actresses' names in the Gilmore Girls. Get out. <laughs> You, you're one from Sin City with the big blue eyes. Oh yeah, she's very sexy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there you true, go. True, true and fairness. And you're one. The mother is very sexy in Bad Santa too. I'll give you that. Yes. But then when they're in the Gilmore Girls, they're a plate of farts. No, it's really good. I'm watching it again. I'm enjoying it. So it's coming out on Netflix this week. Watch it, Dara. You've got about sixty seconds. Hooray! Well, thanks for giving me so much time, but uh, <laughs> I've been I've been reading um, a graphic novel called One Hundred Bullets, and the premise is these different people just living their ordinary lives. Something bad hap- has happened to him in the past, and then this mysterious like G Man appears, and uh, he comes with a suitcase with gun and one hundred car- uh, bullets and uh, evidence of somebody who has hundred percent wronged them in some mm. way, and these bullets give them carte blanche, which is, is that if they take the gun and kill that person, if uh, the police will arrive or the agency and uh, they will look at the bullets they'll, and they'll go like nothing happened here as if it Whoa. didn't happen so oh. they basically have carte blanche to take revenge on whoever it that is in that case and they've obviously evidence the evidence is completely true all that it is and it's about all these different people that this man appears to but there's also a bigger storyline going into what's called the Minutemen and the Minutemen are kind of enforcers we'll say and there's always seven of them going through the ages and they're always given code names one of the interesting things is because like this is after and it starts after an incident that happened and the the Minutemen are scattered and you don't know who they are until like later on you read about them. It's like, oh, it was that guy that I read about earlier on. And they've also got these badass code names and you find out, oh, it's this this guy. Like one's called... Like Mr. Wednesday. One's called the Monster. Uh, one's called the Saint. One's called the Rain. Uh, the Point Man. Uh, oh, there's three others anyway. badass. Yeah, exactly. So you find out, oh, that's that guy. And uh, yeah, no, it's really good. Big o- overarching storyline, and the gra- graphic, uh, the artwork's amazing. Eduardo Rizzo, Argentinian mm. artist. So yeah, right. give it a shot. Uh, who's the guy who was commenting in earlier? Good, but Adam. Fenton. Fenton. Okay, Jesus Fenton. Christ, Fenton. Okay, Fenton. I'm gonna put it to you. Okay, you've heard about the Simpsons Family Guy crossover. You've heard about the Gilmore Girls. You've heard about a hundred bullets. You've heard about Gone Girl. Let us know what you're excited to see. What you're not excited to see. Give us your or thoughts. Eat. Have you seen the Gone? Have you seen any of these? Have you? Do you hate any of them? Do you love any of them? Or Give eat. us a shout, Fenton. Even and if, if there's even other if people as well. Even if you're not Fenton. Yeah, I suppose non-Fenton comments yeah. are technically welcome, but we're really We've interested in Fenton. We've usually got Fenton. our biggest fan, Ashley Manning, listening to it. Yes, we do. So Ashley, and if so you're, if you're out Fenton, there, Fenton. Or Ashley, 083 or just get us on Twitter or Facebook. Also, the other listener, Dara, if you're listening in, um, comment in as well if you want. <laughs> Gerald Fitzdara, is it? Mm. Oh, <laughs> Gerald Fitzdara. Okay, our next song in the line is uh, Delia's Gone by Johnny Cash. It was it's keeping with my offbeat um, Americana theme. It's one of the other ones by Johnny Cash. It's about killing a wife, pretty much. Oh, Delia And that was Delia's Gun by Johnny Cash So it was It was indeed It was So what have we next in the uh, itinerary? Events Events Things from around oh, Limerick it's, it's events, is it? This week in Limerick You can go and see a couple of things On the 9th of October You can go see Andrew Maxwell and Dolan's And if you don't like Andrew Maxwell You can go out to UL Out in the pavilion And see UL Comedy Society And other lovely people from Mental Health Week Do improv comedy Which yes. will be awesome I'm me and myself and Gerald Fitzdar Are you doing it Gerald yep. Fitzdar? I'm presenting it Oh, you're presenting it. And also, it's a tribute to the late, great Robin Williams. So, Indeed, make sure to go on Ah, this. cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's part of mental the health. The old yeah. emotional heartstrings marketing campaign dollar. Yes, That's it is. Dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of the genies all over the poster. And also, I saw that. That was cool, yeah. yeah. 
On Thursday, 16th of October, you can go see the filibusters in the Blind Pig, and why wouldn't you? On Wednesday, 15th of October, you can see John Bishop in the Lime Tree. <coughs> it's a great two weeks for comedy in Limerick. Mm-hmm. Or from October, from next Tuesday, the 14th until the 19th, you can go see Men Without Souls in the Friars Gate Theatre in Kilmallock. Now, don't be fooled. They're actors, they do have souls. That's just the name of the play. Mm-hmm. Ah. I read what it was about, but I forgot what it was about. So go and see it to find mm-hmm. out what it's about. Yeah, Very Friars Gate, lo- lovely theatre. Events things from, from around Limerick. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That has to be the jingle now. Events, <laughs> things from around Limerick. <laughs> okay. Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> so now we have. Oh, we have. <laughs> do you want quiz results or do you want I like that? Um, I like that. Let's go for a bit of I like that, so. Okay. okay. Um, ironically, the only person never to have introduced I Like That is Stephen. Stephen, will you introduce <laughs> who I Like That? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, this is something that we do every week. Stephen has a particular set of <laughs> likes and dislikes. And the lads ask him what he likes and what he dislikes. And he normally sorts things out for them in their heads so that they can understand <laughs> what is right and what is wrong. So let's do this. Okay, hey John, would you like to, to start? With Gone Girl coming out this week, I'll ask, do you like the film Fight Club? I do. I like that. Portable printers. <laughs> what? I don't like that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, thre- I'm threatened by its existence. <laughs> Chewy Warder's original. Remember they introduced soft ones? <laughs> so confused. Chewy Warder's originals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. With himself performing in Dolan's on Thursday, Andrew Maxwell. Uh, I don't like that. Fruit flies. I don't like that. I hate that. (laughs) (laughs) Willies. I don't like that. Last Friday night, Lou McMahon and friends performing live in Limerick City. I like that. Death. Going to go kind of philosophical and say I like that. Oh man, Steven's so deep, yeah. Quantum mechanics, you both like and not like that. One last one, Jeremy Clarkson. I don't like that. I think he gets a bad doing for I kind of judge people who do like that. I like Jeremy Clarkson, I think Top Gear is brilliant. I think he's charming, but I just think he's a horrible no. person in general. I just think he's the biggest troll on earth, really. Sorry, Come before on. we move on to quiz results, what is a portable printer? It's a print. It's, it's a like printer that is portable. Yeah. Is that just like a household one? Did you buy an artist yeah. and you plug it in? Yeah. Why are they portable? Because they're not like big ones. So they have batteries, like. Well, you still plug them in, like. Well, but I mean, you, you, mean could, you plug them into the wall. Yeah. And that's not portable. Yeah, that's but not portable. Can, at all. That's not a portable printer. That's like saying a nice. That's a stationary printer. Just because Relax. it's small a enough po- to carry it. A portable TV can be carried, but you still have to plug it in. I wouldn't count that as a portable uh, no, TV. Not a portable. I, I can count TV. that like a portable. But it's called a portable. But a portable TV to me is like those little handheld ones. No, that's a handheld. That's a handheld TV. A portable no, TV. they're not portable. Portable no. TV isn't defined by you. We use batteries or not. You see what's well, happened? Be. What's happened is um, Dara, Dara and Stephen <laughs> are from a time and place <laughs> where the word portable was loosely defined. While yeah. we come from an age where they actually have a meaning of the word, and it's just, <laughs> just a nonsense thing. You well, put a like, future technology. You don't understand. I love how offended port- Dara port- got by that. Cause you, you were like, "What? That's not portable." He's like, "Dude, relax." Just yeah, I know. I was no. being, I was being uh, overly annoyed for comedy purposes. Yes, actually, he wasn't that bothered by. it. <laughs> uh, okay, so quiz results. Guys, we're going to ask you the questions now. Be honest, Finton and other people are getting answers, so you've really oh. got to pull the socks up. What on this has one. Finton got, incidentally? I'll tell you when you guys oh, answer okay. the questions. <laughs> <laughs> right, but as usual, we're going to pitch you all against each other as well. So maybe because Finton's doing so well, I kind of want Finton to win because he's a nice dude. You have to individually beat him. So just pick a noise, bing it out there, Beep. and be the first one to. Okay, let's hear your noise. <laughs> John? <laughs> okay. So, you got to be the first one in if you want to answer. Okay, question number one. According to Michal Martin, after a meeting with Japanese diplomats, you Irish people are very good at... <laughs> John got there first. I just wanted to irritate Stephen <laughs> by be being in ahead of him and hence delaying the inevitable time when he, in fact, will get to say the answer to the question that was asked by Adam Lahey live on LCCR.ie as Stephen. part of the Philippus's Comedy Hour. Software. There we go. Uh, yep, um, Mihal Martin came back from bother, like. meeting. <laughs> Mihal Martin came back from meeting Japanese diplomats, and on 
live Irish radio said, yes, I talked to the Japanese ambassador and he said, you Irish people are uh, very good at software. <laughs> he did that. You're very good at accents. <laughs> so was Michael Martin. Uh, question number two. During Christmas 2010, the Irish government gave away 53 tonnes of what? People <laughs> under privileged families. Moo. <laughs> John. I didn't appreciate it when I was interrupted <laughs> during my previous answer. I just wanted to make that known. Oh, feel free to answer, fellas. Stephen? Cheese. Correct. The Irish government gave away 53 tonnes of free oh, cheese I know that. to Irish people in the Christmas 2010. <laughs> I did know that. Thank you. Well, actually, Stephen was the one who got the answer right there, Darren. No, I but I, I already put in a silly answer, but then when, upon hearing, actually hearing the question, I did actually. Ah, know. well, then it's you who's the silly one. Yes. Okay. Question number three. In 2009, TD Paul Gorgody created controversy when he swore at what other TD during a dormitory? Beep, beep. Dara? Who did he swear at? Yeah. A mistake. There you go. Yes! <laughs> Two ones, Stephen. Dara's got one. Uh, that wasn't actually four. my noise, though. But, you know, never mind. Oh, <laughs> oh you took his noise, actually. You went beep. <laughs> beep. <laughs> <laughs> he used your noise so this is like in wrestling when somebody uses the other person's finisher the rock has used the stone cold stunner it's so controversial JR we'll decide if it comes down if he gets this one right and you're tied we'll see no Sorry. no 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 Dara wins he gets yeah. it because that's funny that's uh, a funny draw okay question number four so you gotta be on the ball now either you could get this uh, John maybe next week uh, I don't know question number four which former Irish Taoiseach said the boom times are getting even boomier Beep. as well as war- let me finish the question as well as warning citizens not to upset the apple tart Stephen Bertie Ahern correct I wasn't going to guess that so. I was going to guess that so in qu- question number five in, and this one is oh, it's, it's brilliant in 2006 <laughs> then Senator Mary O'Rourke sparked controversy when she referred to her campaign team as working like what Beep. Beep. Oh, I know this as well. I know this as well. I know this. Oh, I didn't say, I didn't okay, do any sing to, to make To make me seem less racist and implicate all of you, would you like to say it at the same time? Pack of blacks? Blacks. Um, I didn't actually know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mary O'Rourke, after she became senator and was taking her campaign team, she said that they were working like blacks all week. Mm. Can I point out that I said it first? And also, Before I'm really was. dumb at all of this, but good at racism, so I feel I should get at least one point. You got to put, yeah, you said it for, okay. Sure. Try to beep before. <laughs> <laughs> still win. Come on, guys. In fact, Stephen, still win. I'm, oh, right, yeah. okay, I thought you were pitting yeah. us against each other. I am, you got two points, they each got one. Wait a minute, how many points did you get? He got three, he, I think. He gets two, no, because I got in ahead of him, so it's fine, he gets all two. Right. Wait a minute, you, you got Bertie. No, that still doesn't add up to five, Jan. What? That still doesn't add up oh, to five. You and Finton are tied. <laughs> no, I, I, okay, so in, in this case, the audience no. to win. Yeah, so no, <laughs> audience gets to win, audience gets yeah. to win. Yeah. Hey, hey, Benton! 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 I'm not right. Benton! 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 Or whether we go straight to our pondering and considering Pond. Finton's victory, Pond. I've got the perfect pondering. Pondering, let's do it. Every every week, considering we talk a lot of comedy and a lot mm-hmm. of crap and stuff like that, we try to finish it off with a philosophical thought. Mm-hmm. Now, in light of Finton's victory, mm-hmm. our pondering this week is if you were going to frape Stephen, <laughs> <laughs> what would be the perfect frape for Stephen? Uh, wait, we're, Finton was watching Love Hate, so he uh, he didn't realise that he won, and he didn't just to clarify. No, he said yes, as in yes, yeah, he yeah, won. Yeah, but that's Finton won. He, won. he he missed. Stephen, your mind. bowl of sour <laughs> grapes are awfully <laughs> full. You better tuck back into your sour grapes. I'm sorry. I would say my favourite show is My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. I love Lego. That would be a good one. Um, or Lego, I like that. I don't know what I could make Stephen say that that would be more embarrassing than some of the stuff he actually says. <laughs> like, I was on his IMDb recently, and he had this big, long quote about how I'm his inspiration. Oh, yeah, yeah. And how I'm that. every, you know, his... be embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, how embarrassing that I'm your inspiration, Stephen. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, if I was to frape Stephen, what would I say? <laughs> 
I don't know. I'd probably, I'd probably literally uh, is over it. Put, put, I put up one of Lou's songs. It's like grand. <laughs> one of the <laughs> not, not her best or something like that. One of the other frapes I got. I got a very simple. I'm gay. Frape. Yeah. Put on my page. Not being a gay man. This this kind of was at odds with my general sexuality. Mm. Mm. So it's it's the usual one. People can kind of it happens quite a bit that people frape with I'm gay and that's fine but on this particular occasion a girl who I was Facebook friends with I met her one time uh, when I was traveling somewhere and we'd been Facebook friends and she took it literally and tried to set me up with (laughs) and after I said that no I wasn't in fact gay she defriended me on Facebook, which was rather uh, an unorthodox way of working. I do quote from Shakespeare, but in text <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I frapped my friend Ethan once on a... Uh, there was this friend page that added all of us, which is uh, was called Limerick in uh, wherever it was, somewhere in New Jersey anyway. So it was a bunch of people who were from Limerick going on their J1 to New Jersey. So they made a friend page where they could all like chat to each other and they asked all of us so they could put their photos and they, they added all of us as friends. And I went on Ethan's page and I did like a big like A4 length rant about how you're all pathetic losers for going <laughs> to America just to hang out with the same people you've grown up with. Just because you think you're on American soil, that girl who's ignored you all your life is going to give you the shift. And just basically tore everybody apart, specifically each one from his page. And then he got like a hundred likes. And everyone was like, you're so uh, well said, Ethan. And all the people who didn't go on the J1 kind of banded around him. So when he saw it, he decided, <laughs> I'm going to pretend it was me. <laughs> And then for like ages we'd be on nights out and people come up to him, oh, Ethan, that, that status you said about the J1, it was so insightful, it was so well said, man. He'd be like, oh yeah, I know, uh, thank you. And I was like, oh, I should be getting the credit. So essentially I raped myself. I got a haircut. We've, we've got about 30 seconds left. Uh, is there one that can beat basically putting out a really big announcement? Because Stephen's quite a successful dude. He's got a lot, lot of fingers and a lot of pies. Post that he's got a breakthrough role in, and like named him director. Mm. And just put it out there. Everyone will be texting yeah. you, congratulating you. And you can't just delete it then. You will have to yeah, leave, for it, leave a good. post going, sorry guys, I didn't get a big role. I'm actually just a failure. That, uh, this you should, a good one would be to say that he's getting, he's going to be part of the Galway Comedy Festival. And that he's going to be brought up, he's getting paid gig to support Phil Jupitus in the Roisin yeah. Dove on next Sunday week. And when they're like, oh my God, congratulations Stephen. They'll be like, no, it's actually John Spillane who all that's happening to. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, I'm doing all that. I just thought that was a funny way of me saying it. Sweet. And also oh, to rub in a bit of hey. achievement in your face. Yeah. Awesome. But I thought that'd be a funny frape on Stephen as well if people were to congratulate him. Cool, Brilliant. Hmm? Congratulations, uh, well, well done. Oh, no. I, it started off as something funny to do to Stephen, and now I'm getting all congratulations, and I feel yeah. sorry. Um, Maybe, St- Stephen, I like that. Hmm. Right, that's all the time we got now, but I'm go- we're going to close the show with what Finton actually wants Stephen to put up. <laughs> yes. It says, I once came into a sock, then wore it to school the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, get that on your page. <laughs> yes. Listeners, if it's not on his page, text in complaining away 344 or any of the pages. Defeat, which I didn't. <laughs> you, you were defeated happened. by Finton, weren't you? So, uh, I'm Stephen Ryan. I got a haircut. I'm Darfur Church. <laughs> I'm Adam Lahey. John Spillan. And we're the filibusters presenting Comedy Hour on LCR.ie. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great week. Talk to you next week. Thing Bye. <laughs> Who else have we got? Oh, John Spillane. Who else have we got? Oh, John Spillane. Not, not the funk singer. Not the funk singer. Not the funk singer. Not the funk singer. No, this like good singing on his head. He's useless. He's useless. He's useless. Good job. He is Tom. You're very welcome along. You're very welcome along. And thanks for listening. You're very welcome along. And thanks for listening.